<laughs> Our next guest is a talented actor whose first film role was in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Not a bad way to start out, y'all. You've also seen him in Anna Karenina and the show Killing Eve. You can catch him now in the Hulu's limited series, We Were the Lucky Ones. Say hello to Henry Lloyd Hughes. <laughs> Rock and roll. Members. But anyway, so Henry, you you have kiddos now. So yes. are they impressed with Harry Potter? Because my kids are obsessed with Harry Potter. Um, so is she. Yes, I love that. <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, kind of cut out the movie. So so. No, you're there. No, I mean I'm there, but like you've really got to be strategic to try and find me in in. The... And I would be strategic as people entered my house. Have you seen my work? And I yes. would show them. My kids, uh, I don't think that you ever believed that I was that young. So when I showed ah. them the when I paused it and I said they were just like, who is that tiny young boy yeah. in the thing? I was 19, by the way. And I was the only one, because I was 19 when I did it, everyone else was still, they had to go to school during the day. So I was like one of the few people who just like hang out for four hours Lucky in the middle you. of the day, listening yeah. to uh, the radio in my trailer because smartphones weren't invented yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, um, I was, I, originally there were like 10 lines in the script and there was only like one line. Every day on set, my name was spelt wrong <laughs> on, the, on, on, the, on the call sheet. It was spelled, Lloyd Hughes, like one word. And so uh, every day I'd be like, hey, do, do you think we should spell, spell? And they were like, absolutely, we're gonna do that. Don't worry about it. And I said, uh, okay. Um, and then the next day, and then the next day, and the next day. And after I'd be about eight months, uh, the film wrapped and someone said to me, he said, you, you know, you have to ask if you wanna go to the premiere. And I said, I don't have to ask to go in the premiere. Like, um, come on, I'm, I'm Roger Davis. I'm the Quidditch captain of Ravenclaw. I've got one line. I'm a pretty big deal around here. <laughs> And uh, I didn't ask, and I didn't get invited to the premiere. Oh my God. So then eventually I went to the screening, and uh, I'm watching the movie, and I'm getting to the bit where my one line is. Oh, And then no. I'm thinking, where, where's the line? That's really weird, it's not there. <laughs> and then it gets later in the film, and I think, well, maybe they've just moved it. Like, it's one line, it's a pretty crucial line, they could move it to the end. It's a crucial line. It's a crucial, line. <laughs> it's a crucial line. And then I start getting anxious because I'm like, they moved, if they move, if, if this line comes in now, it's gonna ruin the film because it doesn't even make sense. Oh, no. The credits come down. That's the, how you found out? That's how I found out. The credits come down, there is no line, and then after the credits roll, my name's spelled incorrectly. No! Oh, no. no. <laughs> So oh when my, my kids, I pause the TV and they, I say, that was me. <laughs> and they don't believe me. Oh my God. Anyway, so explain the show for everybody. So this is, we were the lucky yes. ones. Um, and it's kind of cool because you're playing like real, real people. people. Yeah, yeah, it's a true story. It's, I felt an immense sense of responsibility because this is a real family. It's a real family history. And yeah. Georgia, the woman who wrote the book, which is a fantastic book, and it's a historical book, but it reads like a thriller. Mm -hmm. because what happened to this family is so jaw-droppingly scary and moving. And uh, I felt that it, it just feels like a different world when you're entering acting from a point of view of representing real people, not only real people who once existed, oh, look at you. Yeah. but real, oh yeah. yeah, that's what I look like without the makeup on. Yeah. Um, but real people who um, are tangible and are like, you know, to be on set and to speak to the real relatives of people who lived through this. So the real relatives were on set? Uh, yeah. Is that intimidating? Oh my God. I mean, you're it's, playing it's, one of their relatives. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't, it didn't feel intimidating. It, it, it felt like- a wealth like of it, information. Yeah, no, it felt like it galvanized the whole process because you feel like you want to honor, uh, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's- It motivates you definitely. Exactly, it motivates you to take yeah. it where it needs to go. And honestly, I have never, cried so much watching a show. Mm. I've, I've never watched a show where I cried in every episode. And by the way, mm. I was in this show, so the, I, there's no reason why I should cry at all, because yeah. I know what happens. And also, I was making it, so I should be thinking the sandwiches were rubbish that day. <laughs> but, yeah. but instead, it's so unbelievably moving, it should come with a, a hazard warning yeah. and or a Kleenex sponsorship. Yeah, because I love a good tear. I love to be moved like that. Yeah. If you love yeah. to be moved, yeah. ladies, strap yourselves in. Okay. Yeah. Because this is happening. It's cool to be a part of something you love acting, but it's cool to be a part of something that you also believe in. And it's like, 
there's a message and it's gonna move people. That's cool. It hits different. Yeah, it's like, you know, writing. It's like you can write a fun song, but when you write a song that really moves someone, it's like a different thing. Yeah, like yeah. your to whole be able to chemistry sing album. That. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Like, exactly. She was that, doing the hard, she was doing the hard sell. Exactly. I love this interview. Oh my God, exactly. it's brilliant.